Hi, this is Crystal Alexander. Thanks for watching my Teams Training Part 2 PowerPoint. This PowerPoint was created to go along with a workshop that I presented as part of my advanced practicum class in spring of 2019 offered through the University of Central Missouri, seeking my educational specialist degree in educational technology. I created this training today so that you can see from an educator what the student view looks like when it comes to assignments and teams. In this presentation, educators should be able to teach their students how to complete and turn in assignments, how to open assignments with attachments, how to add their own attachments to assignments, and then from the teacher point of view, how teachers review, return, and give feedback on student work. All right, now I'd like to let you take a look at what it looks like from the assignment view. Notice in a team, you have conversation tab, files tab, class notebook, and assignments. Those are the tabs that come automatically with Microsoft Teams. You can also use this plus sign to add your own tabs. This is the teacher point of view. Notice in the assignments tab, you can switch your screen between grid and list view. In the grid view, students and teachers both see their assignments in this point of view versus the list will arrange them vertically. So far, the teacher and student versions look very similar, except for wherever teachers see the review and create buttons, which are used to review or create assignments, students will see a button called turn it in. The turn it in button is usually in the right hand corner, and this box allows students to turn in their work when they're done. It will also change after a student submits their assignment to say undo turn it in. That's very important. If a student sees the undo turn it in button, that means they've already turned it in. It's also important later when I bring up the fact that students can undo assignments all the way up until the due date. And then depending on the teacher preferences, they can still undo the turn it in after if allowed. Turning it in late is also an option that that button can turn into. So if it's the due date has passed, the turn it in button will already say late so that the student knows. Understand that you can always change your settings later, so if you decide that you want to accept assignments late, you can always uncheck that box so that students have the ability to turn it in. Another feature I'd like to point out is that there's a back button. The back button was a little bit hard to get used to. Whenever you say the back button, you tend to think the back button in your browser. However, there's a back button built in into the Teams assignment, and it's what takes you from the assignment view back to the reviewing pane. I'll show you an example of what I mean about the back button. When I click on this assignment right here, turning in Teams, which is where we'll go next, you'll see the teacher version. And here's the back button. The back button, when clicked, will take you back to your assignments. Make sure you point that out to students because a lot of times they will try to use the back button again in the browser. All right, let's go ahead and try to open an assignment. I want you, the student, to open it up in your version or your view. Go ahead and go to the assignment tab like I was just showing you, top the page, and find the assignment that says turning in assignments. You may decide you want a little bit more room to work with, so you can use your expand tab at the top of the page. It looks like an arrow to expand your view. Notice that that's going to hide the list of your teams or your classes that you're in called your favorites column, but you can always get that back if you unexpand, re-hit that button again. So go ahead and pause here, and I would like you guys to open the assignment. To do that, once you're in the turning in assignments, you're going to find under my work, you're going to see that you can open up a document called turning in assignments. I created this assignment as a learning tool. It's just a simple Microsoft Word document. It's a template. The great thing about creating templates or just creating a document and attaching it in Teams in an assignment is that every student will get the exact same assignment, looks the same, but when they open it, it saves or syncs a copy to their Microsoft OneDrive in Teams itself. That way they can use Teams to work on the work and not have to worry about opening it up in Office 365 to continue the assignment later. Notice at the top, your blue heading shows the name of your assignment. It's called the title, along with your name in the right-hand corner. You should also see the word saved next to the title of the assignment. Microsoft Word constantly, automatically saves your assignments in Teams. I just always like to tell students if they're not sure, they can always still hit the Save button. When you're done typing in your name and your favorite food on that created assignment, part one, please go ahead and press the Close button in the right corner above your name. The close button doesn't turn in the assignment, but it does save your work, which will allow the instructor to see what you've done so far. The great part about Teams 
is it's a live document, so you don't actually have to turn in your work for a teacher to see what's in the document. But I always tell my students to wait until you're completely done before you click turn in. Notice, I didn't have you turn this in because I want to use it again in a little bit. We're going to come back to the assignment part two. When looking at your assignments in the teacher's view, you still see the student work that you've attached, notice there. And there are also three little dots next to your documents, which gives options of how you'd like to open. You can either work on it this way or you can view it in this way. It automatically will open an assignment straight in Teams, which is the best way to tell students to do, to do their work. However, every once in a while, there will be a reason why you'd want them to open up in Word in their desktop to install different features like an Excel graph or inserting pictures from the internet. And we'll get to that in a little bit. When a teacher opens up the assignment that they've attached, it looks very similar to what a student sees with the document loading. It does say it's saved at the top. It has the close button as well, whenever you're looking at it as a teacher's point of view, but it'll give you the ability to review the work if you use the review button. So this is just viewing what I've already attached. I'm gonna close out of that, just like you guys did. What I really like about viewing student work is that it instantly tells you at the top how many were turned in, how many you've graded once you're in the review tab. You get a lot of the information right up front when your due date was. Again, notice that we didn't turn in that assignment we just practiced because I wanted to show you that you can still give your students feedback or comments on work even if they didn't submit it, even if they're not done. Let's say you're an English teacher and you've asked students to submit their to work on their essay and they should at least have their introduction completed. Well, you can go in and take a peek at where they're at as long as they've opened the assignment once, worked on it, and closed it. Then that way you can give them some feedback. However, if you're going to give feedback without giving a score or points, you have to make sure you've clicked the return button after you've done that. So notice here, I show a student who didn't turn in her work, but the little comment button under the feedback is purple or blue. That means that I've already gone in and made feedback. I must click the return button in order for her to see that. If I don't, she won't be able to see it or work on it until I do. So always return that if you want to give feedback. Same for points. If you're done grading it, every single student that you're done grading will be checkmarked and you can return them all at once. I'll give you a little example. You guys just got done answering that one question, your name and your favorite food on that Word document template I created. I'm gonna go in and show you guys what it looks like whenever I make a comment and return it to you. So I'm gonna pause here while I do that. All right, that was simple enough. So let's talk about how to teach your students to attach their own resources. My preferred method is always to make a template and put it in there, even if it is a blank Word document and your instructions were verbal to students. That way it lives in Teams, it's easy to work on. However, sometimes you may have students create their own PowerPoints for an assignment, maybe do a video recording, or maybe find an article from the internet, just depends on your class. And in order to do that, they will have to attach their own resource. When a teacher attaches a resource, again, it looks just like the student way to attach a resource. You will use the add work button, there's a plus. That will give you certain options such as attaching it from your OneDrive, your class notebook, linking it to a website, or uploading it from a device such as a flash drive or saved to the actual computer itself. Again, it looks the same for teachers and students, and those options are many. Students attaching files will sometimes be confusing if they can't remember where they saved it, so make sure you tell them to remember where they saved their document before attaching. Here's an example of what it looks like. In the assignment under resource, a student will attach the resource here. Then they will give these options. After they click those options, they can go into whatever folder. This is just the way that I have my um, folder set up for my research in my grad class. Last but not least, when you're done attaching it, there will be a blue bar that appears underneath the name of the file you've attached. Make sure that blue bar completely finishes or uploads before pressing submit the assignment. Let's go ahead and give this a try. We're gonna pause here, and I want you guys to open up that second assignment I made for you called Attaching Your Own Resource. So go to the Assignment tab at the top and find Attach Your Own Resource Assignment box and click on it. Notice, under the student work from the teacher view, it says none. 
On yours, you should see my work with a plus sign where you can add your own resource. So what resource do we want to add? Well, look at my instructions on this assignment, and it tells you I just want you to open a blank Word document, and I want you to type in that blank Word document your name, and then give me one interesting fact about yourself. Pick where you'd like to save it in your Office 365 flash drive. You could temporarily save it to the desktop. And I want you to use the plus button below my work to attach your file. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to do that. All right, now that you're done with that, go ahead and press the blue turn it in button. This is the first time we're practicing turning it in. And I want you to look that whenever you're done turning it in, the turn it in button will mark the exact date and time you turn it in. And then it will switch to undo turn it in, which means that you do still have the ability to undo the turn it in up until the due date. So I'd like to caution everybody that if you have a student undo their work after they've already turned in an assignment, they must click the undo button before they can work on their assignment. Let's say a student has already turned it in, remembers that they forgot to add something to a document, and starts to work on it. It will only create a read-only copy, which can be found at the top of the title of the assignment, which will say read-only. This will not allow the work to be saved, and students will question what's going on with their teams. So please let students know that they must click the undo work button before working on an assignment. Here's an example of what the read only looks like next to the title of the document. If you see this on your computer screens, please let them know that they need to close immediately, go back to the assignment and undo it before continuing to work on it. Another great feature in Teams from the teacher point of view and the student point of view, is you can see if students have turned in, returned, or if assignments are late. Take a look here. It shows the students Teams assignments that have been returned, one that's past due or late, and one that she's turned in successfully with the green check mark. Another troublesome area is whenever a student wants to finish an assignment from home. A great feature of Teams is they can work on it directly in Teams, but a lot of students will go home and try to open an assignment through their Office 360 account, 365 account, and this will create an issue with the assignment actually saving in Teams. So please direct your students when working from home to load Microsoft Teams and then go directly in there and continue working on their assignment. In some cases, it is a good idea to have students open up Word on their desktop to install certain features like using an Excel graph, inserting pictures that they've saved, or from the internet. In this case, you want to use the three dots next to the assignment title and open in Word. This works if the student has already previously opened it in Teams. Just make sure that two documents are not open at the same time. For example, a student opens it in Teams, decides they want to work on it in the full desktop version, and tries opening it again with the blue box that says Open on Word. This will create two versions, and Teams has a hard time of syncing and trying to decide which version to overwrite. So again, tell your students to use the three dots next to the assignment to decide how to open their work. Here's a visual for you of those three dots and your choices you have when opening up assignment attachments. Go ahead and try this. Go to your assignment tab and click on the assignment called Turning in Assignments. Check the three dots next to it and look at your options. Under My Work, you'll see that you can open it in Teams, in Word, or on Online. By default, Teams always opens it in Teams for the student. Let's go ahead and try this out. Go to your assignment that you previously tried that we didn't turn in, Turning in Teams, Turning in Assignments on Teams, and go down to the Part 2 section of the document. I want you to try opening this in Word instead of in Teams. Go ahead and find a picture from either using the insert button at the top or just a picture from the internet that you can save and insert a picture into part two for me. I want to show you how this works. I'm going to pause here while you guys do that. Once you're done inserting your picture, go ahead and press close on the assignment. Go back into Teams and take a look. You'll notice that the work you just got done typing in on the desktop version has now successfully synced to the online Teams version. Let's recap. Working on assignments. Opening in Word versus Teams, we went over to make sure that you only have one version open at a time and it doesn't say read only. Due dates, you can find these under the main assignment tab and in the assignment directions. Students can turn in assignments late. This feature can be turned on or off by the teacher and it also marks it for the student and the teacher to see when it is turned in late. The undo turn in button is a great feature that students can use. They can undo an assignment and turn it back in as many times as they'd like to make changes up until the due date. Then which, if a teacher has marked it is okay to turn it in late, they can still undo the turn it in 
but the latest version will save and it'll show the teacher that they turned it in late, even if they've previously turned it in on time. 